Josh, did you get the whiskey name? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Barrel Bomb. All right, great. Yep. So you're doing yep, I'm a, on it. a little bit of research on yep. that. Why don't you go ahead and... Is bring the top already open on that? Nah, bring us in. Bring us in. You can go ahead and just open it up. Uh, from the Fox Dennis, Bad Guys and Bourbon, episode 28. There it is for those keeping track. <sighs> now, what... You bought this bottle last week. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we're drinking week old bourbon? Yeah. <laughs> what type of show is it? Who's the production assistant? <laughs> so, you why this bottle? Um, so, again, there is a kind of like a wholesaler. It's kind of like a Total Wines size uh, liquor store. Do they have a name? It's called Reisterstown Wine and Spirits. Okay. Um, Very and good. it's Yeah, Reisterstown Wine and Spirits. Righteous Town Road, like yep. towards Main Street. It's pretty large. Uh, and they do like wholesale, but they also have a wide selection of stuff. And every time I go in, uh, I kind of ask him, you know, what's new? What, you know, what are people buying? And uh, he said, Barrel Bomb this week is new. Uh, so I don't really have a lot of history on it. I'm okay. going to defer to Josh if he's got it up. But uh, again, Righteous Town Wine and Spirits. Uh, so you just asked for the you just asked what is new asked what's and they new. presented that to you. It's not like you were surfing the aisles. No, and, okay. I take that back. I was surfing the aisle. Okay, you found and nothing. I saw this. Oh, you saw. And that. I was like, "Is this new?" He's like, "Yeah, it's great." Okay. And he was like, "Yeah, it's great." He goes like this. It's now, great. were there was this the only iteration that they had, or were there other yeah were there other ones? This this, this is the only one. This is the only one. Okay. Yeah. We were going to go with the old forest. Okay. I like trying new stuff. Yeah. I yeah. feel like we've all kind of had the the staple stuff. So I like yeah. it. Yeah. A bourbon, like, rye. What do we got? This is a bourbon okay. finished in wine barrels. All right. Uh, and I believe this was what, like 45 50 Okay. Around around that price point. Yeah. Josh can do a price so, check yeah. for us in his research, I'm sure. All right. Well, let's crack into that and uh, let's... Good. See what it's all about. Now we'll kick the episode off talking about Movie Pass, which is fun to discuss because Josh, you and I actually have experienced the Movie Pass yeah. back in the uh, inception of it. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw yeah. that. And I almost so, sent that over to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Movie Pass is. I don't. Did you ever use Movie Pass? Are you ever familiar with Movie Pass? I'm very familiar with it. It was a popular thing when I lived in New York. People okay. would get like Movie Pass. I never. Interesting. Yeah, so never, you were in New York at the time. I know you're stepping away from the mic. So. Feel free to take your time with the response. Yeah. So you were in New York at the time that Movie Pass came out. Yeah, you knew a lot of people who had it. Not a lot. I mean, you know, I was working at Apple at the time, yeah. so you're just around a lot of people. Sure. Uh, so you knew a handful. of people Yeah, had. people would just have it. I think my roommate at the time had it. Okay. Shout out to Ryan. So to uh, preface real quick, Movie Pass was essentially a card. It was a service, a subscription service that you'd sign up for, and then they would send you a credit card that was essentially prepaid or more or yeah, less before the and like, you could go happened. to a movie a day and use that card to buy a ticket. And the idea is you pay a flat fee every right. month, and you could see as many movies. I mean, I guess 30 movies in a month or however many days are in the month, you could see that many movies. You could go every day and use it, and it would just cost that flat rate, um, that monthly fee. So that's what MoviePass was when it first came out. Now, I had one. Josh and I, I think, signed up for it roughly around the same time. What year was that? Um, Well, we were both at Apple. It was, I can't remember exactly which store it was. Because it's it's an old thing. It's not like a new. Yeah, so there's been a couple of iterations of it, but we were a part of the original kind of concept. 14? I feel like that was. 13? It was right after I started at BOI, or right around that time. So maybe 16. 16. Okay, that sounds about right, too. Maybe 16. Yeah. Oh, wow. More reason than I thought. Yeah. But. And it was a deal. It was like 10 bucks a month. Yes. It was like $10 a a month. Yep. So. But I, Josh is the only other person at the time that I knew that had it. It's just the two of us. And so it's just interesting. I guess New York, maybe it makes sense. People, more people would have had yeah. it. But I don't ever, I used it maybe once or <laughs> twice. It was not something that I used very frequently. A lot of reasons as to why. Do you know if your friends or those around you, were they using it on a consistent basis? My boy, Reggie, lived by it. Shout out to FKB. He, he loved it. Yeah. So he, he was going to movies it, yeah, all the time. So he it, made yeah. the most of it for its 
lifespan. Yeah. Josh, did you use it a lot or did you? No. Were you okay. So I don't boat. believe that I ever actually used it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. great. <laughs> He's never yeah. used it. <laughs> All right. So. You? Did you? You, you said no, you not, So not I used it like once or twice. Right. And reason being is it was a very rocky start for the company, or at least that was my experience. Yeah. It was like movie theaters weren't in on the joke. Like they didn't know what the product was. They didn't, it wasn't something that they were up that they were like hip to. So yeah. you would show up and use it. And yeah. after, after like a couple of weeks, I think some of the movie theaters kind of came around to what was going on. Um, and so certain movie theaters then started restricting it and you couldn't use it. Then there were certain times you could use it. Then they started locking out certain movies and you couldn't use it. So now you can only so see the So in the beginning, movie. there were no restrictions. Then a lot of restrictions started right. to kind of roll out, which make it, make it made it increasingly Because they had no use. kind of partnership with the theaters. With the theaters, right. correct. Okay. And I don't understand what their original business model was. I think the concept was like enough people would sign up and have it and would just be paying every month and enough people wouldn't actually use it. Yeah. So that that money would just roll over to those that did use it. Right. Because the the movie theaters were supposed to be getting paid. There weren't like deals on the back end. So the movie theaters were supposed to be getting basically paid the full ticket price. Movie Pass was just eating that cost. Right. And I think that they were burning tons of cash in the beginning. But ultimately, I think the long term play was like we'll get enough of a user base that, you know, there will be enough people that won't use it. There'll be some people that, you know, abuse it and it'll kind of all wash out. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did one of the theaters, like AMC or someone, like buy Movie Pass? So I don't it, recall. I, I can't remember if it. I know it went into like bankruptcy and they scrubbed out. Then they came back for a little while. Then they disappeared. And now I think this is their. Th I think this is the, the third, third yeah. relaunch. And they're gonna. There's gonna be like tiered pricing. I think it's like ten, twenty, thirty. But I don't know what the tiers are gonna provide you with. At one point, the former uh, Netflix higher up became the CEO. That was like twenty. I think that was around when we subscribed to it yeah. when they started like mixing. I didn't realize though they'd been around since 2011. Yeah, I, yeah, they've been. Around I a thought while. we got in way now, earlier. I was I. I remember. Well, we are dinosaurs. I feel like you and I. I feel I want to say you and I were both still at Apple when we got our movie passes. I found the first email because it's what I do. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, September we 2017. Damn, oh, okay, is when I signed up. So okay. Well. Three years. I don't know. Post pre pandemic. Felt like a long time ago. Yeah. But maybe they've been around for a while. I don't remember anybody else talking about it. I remember it like maybe it got like press on Gizmodo or in Gadget yeah. or something. Yeah. Somebody started like talking about it and then I signed up and it took a while. Like it wasn't like you signed up and got a card right away. You signed up and it took some time before you actually received right. like the because card. Now <laughs> it's an, it's just an app, right? I don't actually know what it functions as now. I know that they're getting ready to relaunch the service and they're going to have tiered pricing. So I would imagine, again, one of, one of the other things that also kind of screwed with it at the time was a lot of theaters were switching over to a reserved seat platform or there were multiple price points yeah. for tickets. And I don't think MoviePass ever really took that into account. So like, for example, the Towson Theater, the Cinemark, which was, you know, the one that I was going to, they had, like, pr like there were different tiers of pricing for tickets. Yeah. It, depending on, obviously, what time of day you were going, what theater it was going to be, and et cetera. Standard 3D. And IMAX, the movie pass yeah. didn't always necessarily account for that, right? So you yeah. couldn't go to like the reserve level or you couldn't have like the nicer seats or wh whatever the case may be. Um, and so, anyway, it, it wound up being a little bit more of a hassle. At one point, you had to go into the app. You had to book through the app and tell it you were going to go see this movie. It would preload the card with that amount of cash, and then you would go buy the ticket. So with there was the also card. yes, yeah, which and was so, just a Mastercard like debit, yeah. kind of thing with their logo on it. Yeah, so you couldn't pre-buy tickets with it. Like, they kind of it didn't bought the ticket for way. you, and then in turn you give the money. No, no, they, they just pre, gave you the money. They preloaded your you card the, with the money. You yeah. would just you told you them you would just walk to in. Movie. To as far yeah, as the movie yeah. theater knew, okay. you were just some schmo with a debit card, yeah, with exactly ten dollars and eighty two cents or whatever it was yes. on it. So weird. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then like a Chick Fil A. Card. Like I said, things started getting weird with the movie theaters. I think they caught on to it 
Yeah. It, I don't know. It got strange for a while. Like some, some theater chains, you couldn't use it anymore. Yeah. The um, card just, and it was like out of nowhere, the card one day started declining at AMCs. Like, <laughs> yeah, they just, they, yeah. because they like, kind of started their own AMC. Stick so it, t- stick it, um, stick it. <laughs> yeah. And then other theaters you know, came out with their own subscription services. Yeah. Yeah. Which again, I don't, you know, I don't know what the success rate is of any of those subscription services. I'm sure it's very, very low. I don't think, I think movie pass like a long time ago was a good idea. Like if you'd have gone back 2010, 2005 makes a lot of sense. But I think nowadays given the climate. Yeah. That's the question. (laughs) Yeah. I don't see reading up on it. They said that initially they did partner with one brand, the brand that I just read about. I've never, ever heard of before. So, um, I don't remember Some what it was. Thing. I don't remember yeah. what it was. But because yeah. there was a period of time, there was a period of time where they tried to partner with movie theaters because the, their original, con- I think the concept was they were going to try to like basically flood the market and be the dominant player in subscription services for movie theaters and basically just kind of, you know, take over while nobody was paying attention. And then the theaters would basically have to buy into whatever it was that they were doing because they would have just automatically overnight become the the name that everybody recognized. Um, and that just didn't work out. Like a lot of theaters were like, no, we're not going to work with you. We're going to do our own thing. And you know, not, uh, not only that, like your cards aren't going to be accepted here anymore. And it just became a huge thing. Um, but yeah, so back to my point, I, I feel like it would have maybe been successful a while wow, back a long time ago when there weren't all these different like ways you could see movies, different seating options reserved, and I'm sure that- to, you know, all that stuff just really complicates it. And <laughs> If they yeah. were, even if they were successful, I feel like they probably would have gone bankrupt when the pandemic hit. So yeah, well, movie theaters, are, like I said, it's a very strange model. I feel like it's you know inherently based really around like greed of the moment. So like if you get a tentpole movie that drops, you want everybody to pay as absolute much as they can to see that tentpole film initially, and then you kind of maybe scale back. So that's why like when like big, like if you wanted to go see Thor when it came out, like movie pass was restricted from that. You couldn't go couldn't see it, the movies yeah. that were coming out, the ones that you wanted to see, then they, they you know what I mean, it's kind of started scaling Just back. Too much, yeah. And I think the other theaters that did their own subscription services, it was the same way. Like the first weekend or whatever the movie was out, if you wanted to see it you had to pay full price to go see it right. and then you could go subsequent weekends and use your subscription service if you wanted to go see it but it was only certain during certain times it wasn't like peak hours so it's a model that it's when you start putting up too many barriers on a subscription service i think it really erodes like the whole idea behind it and then nobody wants to use it because there's too many rules like it's not like a if you were to if you were to take cinemark and they were just like hey pay us twenty dollars a month you can book whatever seat you want you can come whenever you want, see whatever movie you want, mm-hmm. then that would maybe be worth it. But yeah. if you're gonna make me pay twenty dollars a month and then put and all I can't these even restrictions, see the new shit. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna put all these restrictions mm-hmm. on it, then no, I'm out. But no. again, the movie theater loses in that case because yeah. you know, you're yeah. not it you know. I think it is what I, it is, I mean, I'd pay twenty dollars a month to see any movie. Yes, but what so, but it won't be. So, yeah, like then, they're yeah. they're saying, there's going to be tiered pricing of ten, twenty, thirty. I'm sure that that's going to be. And they're just going to get blocked out again. <laughs> yeah, it also says there's going to be regional variations yeah. in those plans yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be all dependent I don't see them on winning this battle. certain no. movies, certain release windows, like all that stuff's probably going to affect your subscription price. But what is like the master, like the ultimate price you would pay to have just unfettered access? Any movie you wanted to see. Let's say you went to one movie a day. You could go to one movie a day, but you could see XD, 3D, IMAX, whatever it was at that cinema. You could have a reserve level, reserve seat, or mm. you could just go to a shitty matinee. Whatever, I am, all included. Uh, personally, I am a maybe once every, maybe twice every. 90 to 120 days for a theater oh, like in okay. these days. So, so you're, but then in that case, you're not the clientele no. because it's not worth it to you. Or maybe you're their target. They, you maybe are their target. Am, they you could know? be targeting yeah. you because I think they would think that, you know, hopefully you'd think it's a great idea. Yeah, you'd like save a, a lot of money. Marvel I'm in the, movies, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, I don't Marvel go to enough movie movies to justify a high price. Which I still haven't seen Top Gun, but sh- that shit's already out. I bought it. So I just haven't watched it. Yeah, dude, you gotta get on that. Yeah. I, I just, I just mounted my TV. Okay, and I just got uh, a new home, some new home pods. So 
I gotta, I gotta theater this out. Like it's, it's yeah. that you're setting it up. Yeah, I'm setting it up. Setting it up. Like, I gotta wait till the kids are asleep. Is this a and, new yeah. viewing? We spent enough time on movie pass. Is this a new viewing area for you, or is this? Are you just nah, replacing so, the TV? No, my um, my my wife got me a um, uh, a new TV for Christmas that I had yet to mount. Really and slow it, to the. Uh, I just slow to the come up. What on that. what is it? What is the TV? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's like a seventy five inch like element that I got on Black Friday. She yeah. got on Black Friday, and gave it to me on Christmas. Very good, Gary. But it, it's cool for the for the for the viewing area. And so uh, you're replacing an existing TV with this. So I originally had a sixty five inch Vizio in there. Yeah. Moved that to my office. Put mm-hmm. that in there. But it was on the feet on like a low console, and we were just kind of worried that like my daughters would like knock it over on them so he just but we're like always super anxious when we were in yeah. there watching tv so i finally got it mounted my shout out my cousin ricky came and uh he put it up on the wall and like that's oh, great now because at first because it's like low i'm just kind of like oh, I'm not. Mm-hmm. now i'm like it's like up like that and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. 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 okay yeah. so you're getting that all situated yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got some home pods yeah the little guys or the big guys big guys you're gonna do a little stereo setup yeah. very nice all right. Um, and once that's I'm all, it, once that's all set up, yeah. you're gonna rock and roll mm-hmm. Maverick, eh? Yeah. I, I mean, I might. So like, I gotta. We gotta steal time because we got, we got the little kids. So I gotta like, if if the kids are no, like, dude, they can watch Top Gun. They're not gonna. They're gonna ruin it for me. You sure about that? Oh fuck yeah! They're gonna Airplanes ruin. are pretty red. <laughs> what kids? Four and two. Oh yeah, maybe not. They're gonna, they're gonna ruin it for me. So if I can get them to bed early enough, yeah. And you know, I'm not like dog tired like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna plop down and like do All a right. big nice screening on it i love that yeah well for those who have not seen it it's fantastic it's i bought really, it so i'm gonna really, watch it's it. really yeah. good i can't it's wait it's really good it warrants the like 96 or 97 percent that it has because i just rewatched the, the first one on netflix and it's so like man um like everybody's great in it like all the actors are just Excellent. Like, it's a very well-written script, and all the characters are, like, really well-selected. It's got all of the old, like, sound, like, the soundtracks there. Yeah. That all kicks. Tom Cruise is, like, The goat. The goat action hero. He really is. It's phenomenal. (laughs) He's the goat. Emily, we watched it last night, and Emily was just, like, halfway through. She was like, there's just something about Tom Cruise. He's so likable, and I don't know why that is. And I, I agree. It's um, Scientology. It's a Scientology. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> dude looks fantastic. Bro, he looks great. He's, he's he's looks fantastic. Sixty, right? Val Kilmer's in that movie, and I'm telling you what, he's rough, rough. Because he can't talk anymore. Dog right? days, dude, for Val Kilmer. Yeah, he can't. So, um, yeah, and but the aerial cinematography, which is like probably why it. I mean, all the other things are like really really cool but the aerial cinematography is so I, red i heard and I all wait. of the aerial stuff that they do for the most part is all shot in imax and what's the nice thing at least about the i, I so i bought mine on i like in apple itunes whatever the hell it's called um <laughs> that includes and most movies don't do this and it pisses me off where they'll have scenes that are shot in imax but they won't include the imax versions in the home releases so it'll be like the cinema scope like you have the black uh, bars on the top and bottom yeah. all the way through even for the imax portions which i realize like it changes the, the ra- aspect ra- ratio, ratio fills the whole screen if it's a imax sequence because it's you know taller, right. right more more image now it's not like a true obviously like imax shot like they're much bigger but yeah. they at least make use of the full screen so like when you're watching like the moments where people are just like talking on the ground or whatever it's you know your cinemascope your black bars it's like the standard and then thing. when it cuts and then when you go to the aerial oh. fights in this in the sh- scenes of the planes then it's like full like the full thing nice. and the imax shots are just can't wild wait. can't wait wild and I'll tell you what, man, I'm sure there's CG in there. I'm not saying that there's, or CGI, I'm sure it's in there. I'm not saying that it's not, but it's a ride. It's a yeah. very good time. They did an excellent job. Can't wait. Yeah, they did an excellent job. So, yeah. thumbs up yeah. for me on that one. Um, well, like, it's great. If you like the first Top Gun, Loved you'll it. love this one. And you'll I love this I don't know, one. I think I said this on like one of the previous shows when I did the rewatch. 
It's the same three songs. <laughs> in, oh yeah, in Top Gun, oh, like dude. they just they, like you know soundtracks. They usually yes. give you like 10, 11 different songs throughout the movie. Nah, this is three songs. Yeah, they, there's a few additional ones that they have brought in to kind of like spice it up a little bit, but you get all the heaters that you mm-hmm. are expecting. All right, yeah. it it feels really good. Can't wait. It feels really good. Um, and you watch anything else that's great? Anything else that's good this week? This week? I, know we're I mean, my our, watch list. Doing our watch list. Like, you want to do it now? Well, we can talk. I, I don't know. I was just excited about Top Gun, so. Um, I, I, I mean, really. Oh, Game of Thrones. Let's talk about that. House of the Dragon? Yeah, you House do of it? the Dragon. Oh, right, fuck it. Let's, let's do talk it. about that one. Um, There's not, it's not often that you and I have watched the same thing. I'm, I'm bravo. So you're in on yeah. it. Yeah. In on it. Okay. I think... Uh, I think they were, this is them redeeming themselves. They, yeah. s- they knew people were very upset with what happened. And yeah. they were like, watch this. Feels a little early to call it a redemption, no? There's no, yeah, 10 episodes. Okay. Where I'll, say, I'll say yes. It's a little early. I haven't seen the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But from what I saw, I'm, I'm thoroughly on board. Yeah. Yeah. It it just gave me that core essence of what Game of Thrones was in True. the beginning. True. And yeah, I'm just, they kind of return to the roots a little yeah. bit. Yep. It's it's very um lots of parallels to the first. That's what I was that was my only not like criticism of it necessarily, but I did recognize a lot of characters in, in like new old characters. characters in new characters. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, this is the Jamie Lannister. And he's that guy. And uh, like these are the roles. Yeah. Now then, maybe they flipped the script halfway through season one. Could yeah, be. Yeah, who knows? But I just started kind of recognizing, like, oh, they're setting up, you know, this guy is very the similar to Rainier. Rainier's so so. kind of reminds remind, she's I feel like she's a combination of like Arya and and Daenerys. Uh uh, what's his name? Um what's this guy's name? Auto is very. Um, oh, I'm gonna. I'm definitely not good enough with the names at this stage. I, I, I so I read a that. Family Tree article on like uh, I want to say Screen Crush or Screen Rant. Okay, the kind of like helped you. It helped me with the names because I was like, I don't know who the who the fuck these people are. Yeah, the names are complicated, and there's obviously a lot of families. So. Yeah, and I think. So a lot of the criticism, like I, I heard, like my wife is like, I'm not on board. I, I still have a grudge about what they did to us with the season eight of Game of Thrones. And yeah, a lot of people are still salty. Still about salty that. about that. It's and, gonna take time. Yeah, I think it is definitely gonna take time because it's a major investment, and then to feel like what ultimately I feel like has come out is that the last season was just tremendously rushed. Because yeah. even. Yeah. Um, George R. R. Martin came out and was like, I told them it had to be at least 10, 12, 13 yeah, seasons. Said, yeah, like yeah. when they said they wanted to end it at eight, I was like, that's, you know, because they uh, can't do that. D and D Day and what is the the guy, the showrunner? D. B. Weiss and yeah. uh, whatever his name was. Uh, recently learned that the reason it was rushed because they were trying to go do Star Wars. That was yeah, and that was kind fired. of my that was kind yeah. of my theory behind yeah. it as well. Yeah. Like and they never even did it. So Yeah, I thought that was Disney's way of killing Game of Thrones. Yeah. But I thought they kind of went in and like yeah, yeah. We'll snatch took these the guys. golden boys, but yeah, I don't know. It was uh, yeah, season eight of Game of Thrones was just tremendously rushed. So a big disservice to the fan base. Yeah. So I can definitely understand why people would be a little checked out or hesitant to buy in on this. Emily mentioned it a few times while we were watching it. How it's just like hard to want to reinvest. <laughs> it's in like it. being hurt in a relationship yeah. and then going back. <laughs> it's also <laughs> unclear to me now. I know that you know uh, George Martin or whatever. I know he's very involved in this show. I know that he's very yeah. involved in writing it. The one thing that was a little that's a little I'm a little uncertain about is the background and like the history of it all. So like these stories and these characters, do they exist in like a meaningful way already? Or is he kind of writing this as he goes on the fly? Mm. Like is this a one is this a series? Is this gonna be multiple seasons? Is this That's a good question. Is he don't starting know. something new? Like does there is there history already predefined and laid out? Like, like is people, this does this come from a book? Yeah, so like I know that it's I know that like the characters themselves 
are from the pre are from a pre existing like universe, but, like from the pre existing universe that he built. Right, but, but do they have their, their own literature? story as a whole? Uh, yeah, and their literature, like, is it something that he's just coming up with as they're writing the show? I would, or I don't know. Because, like, obviously Game of Thrones is predefined by the book series. Now, I know that the last couple of seasons they didn't have books or whatever, yeah. but and they kind of filled in the blanks. But does we the gotta new get, show... we got to get Mel on the phone. Is the new show, like, how much how much of that is from pre-written info? And they're just kind of... Info. Josh, my I have a source like here got some details that, yeah, I, I'm making that, that face, that uh, uh. face. Um, yeah, I've got a source here that indicates it's based on parts of Fire and Blood. Yeah. So Part, there was fire seed, and blood is the right fire and blood is the novel yeah. right. So there's there's mm-hmm. seed material for it. Okay. But that, that it was source material okay. that then a bunch of it was just written for the television okay. show. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like we had like a jumping off point. But if the show does well and they continue, yeah, what's going to happen? It's like, going to be gonna, yeah. yeah. It. I mean, who knows where it goes? Right. Right. Uh, you have a, a favorite character so far. Um, or someone you're, you're, you're um, the you're hand of the king. I Otto. enjoy him. I yeah. think he's got a he. I, he has a nice way about him. He'll he's a creep. obviously die soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, any, I like anybody him. with like some sort of rationale. Just yeah. like it's gonna die instantly. You know that. So, I, I think it's a very well made show. I would say even yeah. in contrast to like the other to the Game of Thrones like se- you know original series, um, it's probably from a production standpoint better made oh it's it definitely looks, more it was looks a 20 better. million dollar budget for the one episode yeah i mean it looks better i feel like the acting is pretty solid um it also has that um yeah it's on it's on par with if not slightly above from a production standpoint now, it has one, that it seems grander in yes. scale yeah, yeah yeah uh like there's just more because this is what almost two hundred years prior. Prior, yeah. I think it's like so it just seems like more. Specific. It's just kind of built out, and then there it is. What happened? One seventy two. One seventy two. So like, at, over the years, things have just kind of gotten, yeah, smaller in scale. Like even the throne itself. Yeah. 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 Different. Yeah. Very it's different. different. Yeah. So I'm excited for it. I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah. We'll see if we get. It's tough because I feel like I really miss certain characters. They're like Tyrion and stuff. Like yeah. there are people that just or Jon Snow, right? Yeah, who are just you just. I think from yeah. the jump, there are certain characters that you just like really lock into. Yeah, and I, I did not feel that so far. No, I, but I, I'll give it some time. Yeah, but like Ned Stark, dude. Episode one, you're Ned. In. Ned's our guy. And yeah, then, you he's know. your boy. Yeah, yeah he's, you're in. We're watching the story through his perspective. Yes. Episode one, he's. I don't really know who we were watching the story, whose perspective we were watching the story through, in this one. Like sometimes yeah. it was Daenerys. I mean Rhaenyra's. Sometimes it was King Viser- Viserys. Sometimes it was Daemon. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it was uh, Corlys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. I think that's done purposely. Yeah. Yeah. Layout. Yeah. Yeah, where yeah, it's definitely a layout situation yeah. for sure. A lot of subtleties if you like rewatch. Like I watched it the first time for just like a watch, and then uh-huh. I watched it again. Yeah. For, oh, you've watched it twice. Yeah, just for okay. like uh, Good. just right. to get the subtleties of a like repeat viewing. Just think. Well, you know, the first time I watched it was I was working, so it was, yeah. I had the AirPods in. It was on my iPad. And I'm like working, watching, working, You're watching. Interesting working. guy, man. You watch yeah. a lot of stuff while like you're. I, shows like that, like I just, I had to reserve time for. Then it. I did. Then I did the viewing. After I got the, yeah. So I get all the the like the, the the stuff out the way. You know the the, the gut wrenching stuff and. The, yeah, you want to know who's gonna die. I, yeah, I got get out get that out the way, and then I can watch Focus for on like the details, effects, and mm. details, and I can okay. see how like well CGI the dragons are and like shit like that. Yeah. Like okay. On, on the rewatch on the TV. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did you see the latest trailer for the new Lord of the Rings? I did. Okay. No, I, I saw they shots. Like, I think they dropped it like the same day that like the Game of Thrones thing. Or I like didn't. the day after. I yeah. saw screenshots of it and I'm uh and in that article they were raving about how well it was done. Yeah. So I didn't see the trailer, but I'm I'm it, hearing great things. The one thing that I think that they have accomplished with that show, whether or not 
T- TBD on whether or not the story is great. Although some of the early reviews have come out and said very good things. They said it was good, yeah. Um, visually, it looks astonishing. I like, don't. There is stuff in the new trailer, and I know when I, the first trailer came out, I was like, everybody's way too sexy. They're all still. <laughs> we did say they're that all the still way too sexy, but. I will say that like the shots and the stuff that you're seeing, like the CGI, the the characters, they got a crazy budget it's too. It's five hundred uh, million dollars for the entire for the season. entire season. They yeah. they're gonna get it back. I mean, it's Amazon. I don't they've know. They've already gonna, got it back. Yeah, but I don't know if they're gonna make a billion dollars by view, in viewing. You think? I don't know. I don't even know how it's it works, hard but. to imagine that people. It's hard to imagine that people would sign up for just if they don't watch. have Amazon Prime now. I can't imagine anybody signing up just to watch Lord the Lord of the, of the Rings. Rings. Yeah. But there must be some data. To, there's two things here. But you, everyone a, has Amazon. A, there's either data to suggest that there is a group of people that could be tapped into with mm. a TV show like this and that could bring them into the Amazon ecosystem. That's A. Or B... Jeff Bezos was just like, listen, I, love I this. want some awards on the wall. Let's go. He Let's wants to swing his dick with the other. Uh, it's got to be difficult to, to quantize, like to, to show what the return on that investment is for Amazon. Correct. Because they've because got so many business lines yeah, and so exactly. many like hands and pies and whatever. Which is why I think it's more of just like a power play. They just want to come up, like they just. They he wants have, to go to the Oscar. They the have like the ability to, like, yeah. to just throw ungodly million. amounts of money at something. So, like, it's what? Nuts. What if you did throw an ungodly amount of money at something, and they're like in the position to do it? Like, no other studio can do that. So, it is kind of a cool experiment from that perspective. And somebody at Amazon probably just figures like, we can do it, so why not just see what happens? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, it has to be the most expensive TV show ever, ever made. Has to. Has to. Has to be. By far. Imagine. By far. Imagine it's a hit. Even the movies. I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be more expensive. I mean, maybe Avatar or something was more expensive. I don't know. Josh, can we find out what's 500 million was the Lord of the Rings TV show? Is there anything else? Is there a movie that's more expensive than that or a TV series? Yep. It even rivals it. I can't imagine. I, I would hey, think, give me just a minute. I would think that also with this, you would think that, and I don't know, Amazon would do more from the marketing side to kind of get us, get us amped for Lord of the Rings, like the entire. Yeah. I mean, of, at the same time, they probably feel so like they don't. This. Word of mouth is everything, though. Yeah, it is. It is. Because nobody, the truth is, if you put a trailer out on YouTube or. It's going to. The um, algorithms gizmo, are whatever. Like gonna, you put trailers out and people get to them, sure. And they'll get millions of views. Yeah. Like yeah. people that follow it or track it, if you're into the Marvel thing, like you're gonna watch the latest trailer. Yeah. But sci fi it's more word of mouth. Like more more T V shows same. that I watch are from word of mouth than they are from the trailer. True. Movies, maybe not so much, but most TV shows, it's like somebody was like, Hey, you gotta check this show out. It's really rad. I go check it out. Yes. And less I, less I, trailers. Unless I'm like really hyped for it, looking for it. Like Game of Thrones is different. The Last of Us. Like there are certain things that I'm looking for the trailers. Well, that's, but that's interesting. So like how do you discover trailers? Like are you just kind of like just watching shit and it happens or like – I mean that's a good question. Like most things that come out that are TV shows, like anything Netflix puts out, I rarely ever see the trailer. Yeah. It just never, never. Ha- never crosses my path unless it's something that is like highly anticipated – you know, like Stranger Things gets yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. publicity when the trailer comes out. Um, but there's, a, I mean, most things that drop onto Netflix really kind of just like all of a sudden it's on Netflix. And, you know. I don't know if it's my algorithm, but I get a lot of trailers via YouTube. Like, I'm a big YouTube guy while, yeah. I'm, while I'm working. Sure. And I get a lot of trailers mm-hmm. in, the, in those YouTube ads. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I don't, I don't know if like that, like, I, I know you do a lot of YouTube too. Yes, I don't know. I get that, and I get um, uh, the windows. The people want to come build your windows. Yeah, that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's a lot of windows out there yeah. that need to be rebuilt. Yeah. Um, Any word on the movie? Yeah. TV um, show. TV price shows. Points? The Rings of Power is definitely the most expensive TV show. Uh, Fifty-eight million per episode. <sighs> that's nice. uh, followed by Stranger Things at thirty. Um, really? Yeah. The Good Marvel. Some of the Marvel TV shows. Them. Twenty-five. 
Um, and the most expensive film was um, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Came no in at three hundred seventy nine million. How much did it make? Uh, the profit doo -doo, to box office was a little over one billion. God damn it! My God, he's on that money. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. All right, so golly. <laughs> My God! And then the next, actually, the next three in the most expensive films were three Avengers films, of course, followed Disney. by another Pirates film. All so, Disney. Wow. All, all Disney. Yep. Disney mm -hmm. really rolling the carpet out for the Pirates yep. films, man. Real three. All years. Disney. Oh, my God. And and you know what? Yeah, um, number five, Justice League. Number s tied for number five is Justice League Seven, uh, Solo, and then Rise of Skywalker. Isn't so that sad that Disney Solo holds? Is, they spent so much on it and they fucking geez, yeah, well, tanked. Yeah. So yeah, Disney holds seven of the top ten. Good movies. Grief. And there's my boy TC creeping up with Top Gun too. Ain't that some shit? Yeah, where's Top Gun at? Right it's now? six right now. All time grossing, I think. Top Gun. Yeah, this is expensive to make, and I'm not talking oh, about yeah. gross. Uh, you know, yeah, too box shame. Box office. Too shame. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it probably wasn't that expensive to make that, but <laughs> probably not. Anyway, Lord of the Rings, that's coming out soon. Um, excited about that. I'm gonna double back uh, on this. Uh, what is this shit called? Barrel Bond. We're gonna talk about this. Yeah. Yes, and then we're gonna we're gonna pivot to the James Bond topic because Amazon and James Bond. So let's, got it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, so we'll transition to that. But thoughts on the Barrel Bomb? Gets better. Does it taste a little medicinal to you on the front end? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's very right. hard. And I thought so. Yeah. I thought it tasted a little like Nyquilish. Very hard in the beginning. Or something of that nature. Yep. And I'm getting a, like a weird mm. coffee, like on the aftertaste. I think that's the wine. The wine, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Ah, what's the proof? Yeah, it's very, very alcohol forward, like you said, for a forty. 43% proof. It sounds like this one's not like a big winner for us then. Mm. I'm not sure if I would like revisit it no. necessarily. I mean, I wouldn't, there's, I mean, I've had things I hate more. Woodbine. Or that I dislike more. It was like 45, I think, something like that. Barrel bomb, turkey? I don't think for that price point. It, it tastes, it tastes, uh, Mm. A lot of discussion on the interwebs about using it in hot toddies. Ah, no kidding. It's it's probably we're we're straight whiskey hot, drinkers. Hot toddies, man. Very That's interesting. Oh, I love them. That's a time. It's a good yeah. thing. Oh, it definitely you, is. It was they were popular during COVID. Yeah, a lot of people were right there. A double. You're about to experience a double blast of bold and delicious flavors, born in a unique style of bourbon blending. Mm. Each lot of barrel bomb is aged in new. American white oak barrels before spending some quality time in precision Cabernet Sauvignon wine barrels. The double barrel approach delivers a rich infusion of extra flavor. Too oh, much flavor. That yeah. titillates and excites from the first sip to the satisfying finish. Too much flavor. I don't like that they said titillates. Uh, I yeah, like, I mean, it, I, the I fact like that it. they did kind of actually changed my whole opinion of the thing. Um, let me give you a little background on this because this has been... It's a little convoluted. So on the on the on that, that, that product, product. So? right? Yeah. So Do there's tell. two products called Barrel Bomb. Oh, this, no. and then there's a small batch. Okay. okay, and they're made by two completely separate companies. This does say small batch. Oh, okay. Then there's an then there's a di then there's another one. There's another one. The top. from another there's company. Either way, there's two Barrel Bomb products. Okay. Two completely separate labels. Yep. However, they license the same name. Okay. Interesting. So the stupid the 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 <laughs> on their website they give this this whole thing you know kind of like you just read there, yeah. but they mention that they are not distillers. This is just bourbon from another distillery. Mm. And on the website, they go, but we'll never tell who, you know, that oh, kind of no, bullshit, right? No. And then Precision is the company that makes this. Precision, they yeah. buy the bourbon, they ship it to California, age it in the barrels, Interesting. stamp the name on it, and then go. So the like other bourbon or barrel bomb is made by a company in Connecticut that essentially does a similar thing, but they use different 
barrels and a different like we don't know where the fuck this is from. It's very it's very <laughs> conv- like reading this article that you know, and this is according to you know this reviewer wow. uh, who had interviewed a bunch of people at Precision and at the distributor and whatever it is. Uh, but it looks either way. The, the long story short here is it looks like it just started distributing here because it okay. was exclusive. Yeah, to he said it was like yeah, New York, Jersey, new arrival kind of area. Okay. All right. But um, All right. yeah, very and Green River Distilling looks like the actual manufacturer of the Ooh. or the distiller. It's very sweet, very syrupy. Uh, a little artificial. Yeah, very hard in the beginning. I mean, I'm fine after I've been drinking it. Yeah, you got to get through one yeah, or two. Yeah, one of them, or two. Like the first, which is kind two of these you, know, sips, you can I was like, you ah. can drink anything at that point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll do I don't another, know. but it's I, yeah. It, I'll yeah. I'll. Work through it, but it's probably not something I would where revisit. We, where we, uh, I don't know. All right, uh, you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said I, yeah, I won't I'm, buy it again. Yeah, I'm not revisiting. Yeah. Um, Idris Elba, James Bond, long time rumor. Oh, um, <laughs> Josh, so sorry. So I've been hoping for this for a long time. Now he says what that, is he saying? Uh, he he says, quote unquote, that when he looks in the mirror, he doesn't see James Bond. You can take that a few ways. You can take that as James Bond has always been traditionally white, mm-hmm. so he doesn't see James Bond. He can take that as creatively he doesn't see himself doing a role like that. Mm. Like he's not the suave. Now... Let me let anyone tell it. He is the suave. I'd say he's the yeah, suave. Like yeah. the suave, yeah. debonair, uh, he could do the secret agent. Yeah. Also, up until recently with this Lion movie, he did what? He did The Losers. Okay, I was going to say, but I had, to, I had to backtrack. I was going to say, I don't know if he's a big action guy, but he just did Suicide Squad. He did The Losers. He did... Uh, What's that? He did do. Yeah, he's so he he is a, he is an action 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 guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can kind of take that a few ways. Did he say how he meant it? Well, it seems like a lot of people have been suggesting that he could be the new James Bond or that he should be the new James Bond, and he has kind of continuously pushed back on that, saying no. everything from you know they've. It's not like they've not had those conversations. He's not really interested in the role. Um, this was just a more recent uh, article where he had just said that, you know. Yeah, yeah, He kind of was putting his final stamp on not maybe being James Bond by saying, like, listen, like, I don't, when I look in the mirror, like, I don't see James Bond. Like, I don't have any oh, intention on shut up, doing bitches. James Bond. He's, and so. He's being, he's being incredibly modest and the, the, coy. The quote here, here most recently. I have no more answers for it. I just tell people, oh, don't ask me that. Because a lot of times it's really lazy journalism. And people try to use it as a clickbait. Like, what's he going to say this time? I try to say the yeah. same things. And every now and then I just tease them. But every now and then I'll give them some philosophy on why I don't want to do it or why it's a rumor. But most times now I tend to not talk about it. Yeah. Well, okay. So he's really just kind of throwing people off because he doesn't have anything to say about it. He doesn't, no one's talked to him about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think that they've... I, I don't think that they've approached anybody about it would be my guess. I know that they're kind of in the searching process for the new James Bond. But yeah. That's the next bit here. Barbara Broccoli uh, said, quote, nobody's in the running. Uh, we're looking out. We're working out where to go with him. We're just yeah. talking it through and there isn't a script and we can't come up with one until we know Who, uh, the what, the, what the approach to the next film is because really it's a reinvention of Bond. Again, yeah. I would think they were going to... My only, I would love to see Idris Elba in as yeah, Bond. He's great. I love him. My only thought on it is suspicion. I'm guessing they're going to start with a younger Bond. Oh, it would have to be. I would think that they're going to, because Daniel Craig, even when he started, was like a little bit of an older Bond. He was in his 40s. So I would yeah. think they would like go back and do something that's, it has to be it's again, my guess. Uh, like Josh it's says, guess. and like they said in the article, a reinvention. Um, you know, Bond is. <laughs> I, I always laugh about how the uh, British and UK actors can come over and do American accents with no problem, mm-hmm. but we can't go. We can't do 
uh, or American yeah, actors. Yeah, American can't. just ends up being Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, <laughs> they Aaron can't, Poppins. can't right. do uh, you know an English accent well enough to even be you know considered for those those type of roles. Um, so it would you know in in vain of James Bond and you know all of those actors, it would have to be someone English. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, I, think, I think that's like a requirement. Yeah. Isn't. I would I mean. I don't know if they've ever used anybody that's not. I'd like Taron Egerton. Have they? Taron Egerton. Um, Isn't every James Bond been? Well, Sean Connery was Scottish, not English, but oh, British. Regardless. Same kind of vibe. Yeah. Cross the pond. Sure. What? <laughs> I mean, it's not like they're gonna make. I mean, Chris Pratt or something. It's, I mean, nah. it's not like they've got one of those. Well, guys. he's gonna uh, be Mario. So George yeah. Lazenby was Australian. I mean, but okay. he did two, three. He's, Three movies. All right, so it's not a requirement. Listen, guys, it's not I'm just a saying. strict requirement. You need an accent. Yeah, that helps. You need an accent. English related accent. English related Commonwealth. accent. Yes. Commonwealth. Yeah. Okay, so not a strict requirement that you're from yeah. the UK. You need, yeah, you need something. There's some flexibility there. There was also rumors about a, a lady bond. Mm-hmm. And in this article, uh, Barbara Broccoli also says that she w- didn't really feel that was the way to go, recasting a, a, yeah. a male bond as a female. But instead, maybe coming up with stronger female characters. There's been some. There's been some. Uh, some women-related spy franchises that could just they could just build on rather than not to what what because what what's her name? Uh, Scarlett Johansson did one like not Black mm-hmm. Widow, but she did something yeah, else. She did. Salt. No, salt, no was salt was with was Jolie. Uh, yeah, Angelina Jolie. Salt. Um, uh, what's it called? There was a fucking atomic blonde. atomic blonde. Yeah, so, so there would, are franchises. There's a lot that they of, can, but I wouldn't call them franchises as much as as much as yeah, they're they more have just to. like standalone stories. Bond is a like a staple, a very yeah. old franchise. It comes from books. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's got a long legacy, right? So I think the idea of handing that legacy over to like a, a woman, yeah. for example, I think that was what everybody's kind of been discussing, like the possibility of that or if, whether there's interest in that. Yeah. So it's a little different, like Salt, yes, great. Or, well, I mean, a lot of those, right? Um, but again, they're not, Bond. there's not that history there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little different. Yeah. But I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I don't really have any, Actresses off off the top of my English actresses off the top of my head that would yeah you know kind of fit the which I, I wouldn't mind yeah that should, I, I don't mean, if it kicks know, ass it kicks like, ass I don't know the books that well me I don't, I've never no. read one my uncle like I don't was a big I kind of like the idea of Bond not necessarily being like I, they kind of did this in the last one right like Bond isn't really a Person. A person, I like as much as it is a like title. a tag or yeah. a title, right? And new there was a new double O that was a yeah. woman in the last yeah. James Bond. And I know Daniel Craig's obviously in there and he's back. He's Bond, but, thing, but she's the new 007. I kind of yeah. like the idea of maybe like... Even the name being. Doing that, like yeah. even just like splitting it up and changing it and diversifying it in that way could be maybe interesting. Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. I'm a little... Nah, I... I I think business wise, I think the holdup was the was the Amazon acquisition of MGM, which is why they're kind yeah. of just like, yeah, we'll we'll get to it like after the dust after the ink dries and, and settles or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I I I I, I kind of think the Idris ship has passed. Um, I think he's just a touch on the older side. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. You know, I love Idris. You know, he's a you know, you know, Baltimore people. We love him. You know, Stringer Bell, but. Uh, I think the the James Bond ship has passed. Now, if they do want to be, you know, if they do want to diversify it and go young and black, I like the guy from uh, what's the show? What's that show? Damson and the other guy. What's the other guy? He would. No, no, no. He was in um, the Netflix thing where the people are like in the wigs and stuff. The um, Bridgerton. That's what it's called. I can't remember his name, but Bridgerton. Um, yep. I watched the first season. I did not watch the The black second. guy. You know yeah, Reggie John yeah. Page. Yes, him. Yep, yep. I would have never guessed that name. <laughs> it's hyphenated and there's an accent. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but uh I mean he's he's cool. Um but yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. Again, I like I like Taryn Ter- Egerton. Edgerton. 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 Um but he you know, he has the Kingsman. 
So I don't know if that would be too kind of similar. Mm. Um, yeah. Which I, I enjoy the Kingsman franchise. I love it. Yeah, and it's yeah. tough. Um, last one was a little hard, a little rocky to get through, but still good. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know what they do. Again, it has to be a reinvention and and true to what Bond is. Mm-hmm. Bond is a kick-ass secret agent who loves women and just does incredible things. And uh, uh, the what was the Pierce Brosnan uh, adaptation was kind of on the campy side. Yeah. And the well, the, it was that time of yeah, you know, you know, uh, it was just the time and, place. and the uh, it was a very campy time. <laughs> and the Jason Statham was one of the very serious, very grounded in real life uh, side. So I don't know if they kind of stay on that. I, Again, like you said, I, I would like younger. I don't think they're going goofy. It's not happening. I wouldn't on goofy. They're not going goofy. I'm not ready. They're not going back to Pierce Brown. You just said Jason Statham. What were you just not talking Jason about? Jason Statham. Oh, yeah, I was confused. About, yeah, I thought you were just referencing like a about. type. What's his name? Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Fuck, okay, great. Fine. Okay, okay, we're good. good. We're good. I thought you were just referencing like a type of character. I did catch that and I was like, this is kind of... No, Maybe he's just saying like a Jason Statham. Yep, right. Right. And I need to just issue a correction because now I feel I need to correct when I'm wrong. George Lazenby B did one film, not three. Sorry about Ooh. that. Good grief. The Aussie on Her Majesty's Secret oh, Service, okay. 1969. Your Majesty's Just Secret. one? Just one. One film. Damn. Sean Connery, little sandwich right there because he came you back must, for Diamonds Are Forever. You must really like just bomb if you're... I've never seen it. So no, you can't. I think yeah. like... Yeah. For them to say, don't come back. We're going to call back. You're just going to do one? <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucked this up, bro. My gosh. Um, Batgirl news. Uh, seems like they're having, uh, what are the funeral screenings? They are playing some of it for cast members and crew. And then there's some execs at Warner Brothers that are overseeing their, what they're calling it funeral screenings, which is basically like where they're just letting before people watch it, it before, before yeah. it goes away. They've deleted the footage from the servers or removed everybody's access. They have one DVD. <laughs> Did it just open it up the Warner Theater on a lot? And like, you know, after work, you DVD, can come see this if you want. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. I don't no, know. Just release it. It's interesting because like there's something to be said about the hype that it's generating by not releasing it and by doing all the stuff that they are doing. There's like a weird like viral component to it where I feel like nobody would really give a shit about Batgirl if no. they just released it, right? So now they're not oh, releasing it's a, a, a ploy, and now like everybody's create talking this mystery about around the movie. It's like this oh. secret film. That like it's too taboo. Nobody can have it, and it's like <laughs> a few people are seeing it, or like the footage is gone. The directors don't have access to it anymore. It's becoming like this thing that's so like, I, it's like you can't. I, I don't know. It's like you're interested. I would listen. I ne- yeah, never like, cared about Batgirl before. Uh, ever, this ever. News. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I. I mean, I would have watched it maybe on streaming, but I don't think I would have gone to the theater. I don't think I would have even watched it if it had just came out. Yeah, like it I just seems, would have been like, well, but now I feel like they're now, drumming up so much attention. I gotta see it. I right. gotta see it. Now. Yeah, because it. They're either a doing that. They're either just like they just want the publicity. Of maybe it they all, know it's bad, and they're which just they're like, getting, yeah. or it's just dog shit. If it's dog shit, and I know that there's all these like articles that are coming out where the director's like, "Well, you know, it's not us. Like the film was good. Like we're, Mm. you know, we're talented. Warner Brothers said it wasn't us, or it wasn't the quality of the film, or the acting, or whatever. The actors and the actresses are coming out defending it. It has to be absolute garbage. Did you know that there's something more like mischievous going on? The directors from Miss Marvel did it. And then when it, the word came out that it got canceled, Kevin Feige apparently reached out to them and was like, uh, you know, you know, whatever, whatever. Congratulations on the hard work. You know, shit happens, blah, blah, blah. You know, basically like, you know, you can come back home if you want. You know, yeah. like you went out, you did your thing and that shit's whack. So, yeah, you, you can come back. But um, I just feel like, the, like, like you said, man, they're just creating all of this, this – this There's a lot of noise weird, around it. Yeah, also, noise. That's the only like way that word information for it. Yeah. about like the funeral screenings and the deleting of the footage and all of that. I feel as if that stuff wouldn't like normally make 
the rounds in media or in press. Because that probably happens from time to time where like a studio is working on a movie and then they decide to just bail or scrap it or whatever because it doesn't wind up being, you know, turning out the way they thought it would. But it feels like for whatever reason, this is just getting like all the attention and all the press. And there's just so every day there's more information coming out about Batgirl and what's happening with the footage or what's happening with the directors or the the actors and actresses are coming out and they're posting testimonials about how yes. the studio has to release yes. the footage and all of this stuff. It's almost like a... Um, like a Snyder thing all Snyder over cut, again yeah. or something. And to be honest, like they've kind of successfully drummed up a lot of attention. So hard I've to know whether that's intentional or not. Somewhere that, and I it came in passing and I didn't, I didn't like bookmark it or anything that Ben Affleck has gone to do reshoots as Batman for the parts in the Batgirl movie. Interesting. I've not seen that. Yeah. I I can't I want to say I did see that. And I don't I don't know if it's I don't actually know. Yeah. If it's Batgirl or The Flash. Yeah. But one of those movies. He, it's The Flash. I think it's The Flash. Yeah. He has gone to do research. It's got to be The Flash. I think it is The Flash because Batgirl's not going to come out. Yeah. So they don't want to waste the Keaton feature like for no reason. Yeah. So he's going it's The Flash. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think he's Batgirl. Sorry guys, the it's The Flash, yeah. Um yeah. cuz they're going to they're going to stick it out with Ezra Miller. Yeah, dude, they're really doubling down. Well, I read an article that they were thinking about maybe bailing on The Flash, yeah. but they must feel like what they have is pretty good so far. I, I feel like they would have scrapped it otherwise with the Batgirl thing. Like, why not just dump a bunch of your DC like properties and just kind of reboot all of that, which is seemingly what they're working towards. It seems as if... I think, I think the truth is that Batgirl, they knew that it wasn't going to be a good film. And it fragments the universe in a mm -hmm. way that's not really beneficial because mm -hmm. they're kind of in this pivotal point where they're merging companies, right? Yeah. And they're trying to define their own cinematic universe and lay out something similar to the MCU. So I think they felt like Batgirl is just a miss at this point and it's confusing and it's just going to do nothing but be a disservice to them in the long term yeah. because they're going to have to again, deal with the negative fallout of it being a bad film. And then also like, you know, it's kind of like third on their face. Like again, we've, you know, have more Batman. We have more characters that aren't continuing. We're signing yeah. Matt Reeves to this 10 year deal and or whatever it is. Batman, yeah. yeah. And we're going to build this universe around Matt Reeves cause he has a vision and he's established something that works and that we feel has legs. So why continue to prop up all of these old, components or these characters that we feel like that are aren't have really nothing gonna, to do with yeah, this movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, it's hard to imagine like where Black Adam fits in, Shazam <laughs> fits in, Aquaman. Like it's I would ridiculous. have to imagine and Aquaman just got delayed by a year. So I would have to imagine that Aquaman Bananas. it's got to be the last Aquaman. Has got, to be. The Flash if it comes out has to be the last Flash. I Af mean Affleck had signed on for Aquaman too as well. Yeah. Like so what is going on? Guys, if just, there's money to be made, it's not going to be the last of anything. It's no, not. that's true. That's that's true. However, I don't think that the Christopher Nolan like saga that they tried to kick off with those characters like with Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Superman, like that whole era. It doesn't seem like they're moving forward with that. Snyder like the Snyder verse too. Yeah. I guess like Christopher Nolan kicked it off, then Snyder Zack took Snyder over, took yeah. over. I feel like that all is kind of just burning out but in a really slow way. Just and I think start, that they scrap it all at this point. That's what I was thinking, but they must feel like they have too much invested or they must feel that the Aquaman sequel and that the Flash are good enough that they might as well put them out. Like, it's going to make them money. They just have a, a bunch of pieces to a puzzle that don't match up. Yeah, Batgirl has to be terrible. To there's be. no other option. It has to be just absolutely terrible. And they felt like there's no need... It does them a disservice to fragment the universe further, which is all that it would do because you have all of these characters that aren't going to be moving forward in any sense. They're not a part of the Snyderverse. They're not a part of Matt Reeves' universe. They're just, you know, yeah. they're, ju it's they're just CW a, characters. It's on, a side on show. Movie. Yeah. It's, a, it's a side shit show. That's all that it is. Do you remember um, the 
Superman movie that was supposed to be made with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this yeah, just Tim feels Burton. like that all over Tim again. Burton direct, was directing and it. And then they ended up making a documentary yeah, about there was the a, movie that never got made. Correct, yeah. Which there was, was a, so popular. All the test footage and all yeah. of that stuff of him in the, the different Superman suits. Nick and, Cage with this long con yes. air, hair, yes. in the muscle, like, yep. oh my. Yep. He looked like Homelander. Like, he, that's what he looked like. It was ridiculous. Yeah, there was that time where, like, again, comic movies, comic book movies were very, like, comic book, campy, campy, comic, yeah. like, there, like that whole fantasy element really yeah. played into it. And again, Tim Burton had his had his place there with, you know, obviously Batman and yeah. whatnot. And it yeah. kind of, I think they kind of thought, well, let's continue rolling this forward. But I think the obscurity of Tim Latex. Burton's stuff. I think it didn't like go out of fashion, but I think it just shifted a little bit. Like I think he kind of went on his own path a little bit, and then they brought yeah. the comic book stuff a little bit, you know, more, more into the grounded, real, yeah. yeah, more grounded, more realistic, yeah. uh, you know, storytelling. Yeah, but it's just nuts, man. That is what's nuts. left. Um, I can shit on Jurassic World for a while. Please do if you would like. Yeah, we're we're through. Uh, Not that anybody else here has seen it and can contribute anything to it, but so my yeah, God, you told me you had a story because I uh, asked you the worst movie I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> All right, so let's all right. Let's like, start. Not let's start that, here. here's the thing. It's not like I would have walked out if I was at the theater, but my God, so bad. You text us so like, terrible. "Yo, Jurassic World." You you have to watch it <laughs> right? because of how bad it is. And I was like, "All right, cool." So I go to. I go to find it, uh, like Apple TV, which I, you know, it, you can see where it will be. Didn't anywhere. he give you a Plex thing? Don't you have access to the whole? World? That's funny because I got an email. Never from Plex. activated it. I don't think. Okay, I got it. That's the problem. Oh, I that got, you need to change your password. Yeah. I got no. That all of my data has been sold nah, or some shit like nah. that. So I was just like, all right, I don't, fake I, news, I, fake news. Okay, all right, yeah. So I did. I need to do the Plex thing, but and I'm like, all right, what? This shit's not out yet. And then I never text you back to say it wasn't out. And then today you're like, oh, it was the fucking worst, worst fucking movie. So here we are. So please tell me it's why. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible film. But you it's called this so weeks bad. ago that it would be. Well, I, the Jurassic World franchise has been very bad. It I hasn't think been great. The yeah. first Jurassic World was fun because the idea that they had put kind of for us was an interesting one and a believable one that, okay... We've recreated dinosaurs. We tried the park thing a long time ago. Work. It did not work out. But here we are. We've grown up. We have technology. We're moving forward. Let's build this thing again. I can buy that concept 100% because this is very, it's very real. That happens. So walk us. Okay, so that's the, fir that's, the that's the first one. And then the second one is it goes away and then the dinosaurs are out in the- So then the second concept- in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom, yeah. yes. So this is the one where they, again, they're following- They're selling one on black market They're and following shit. the same concept as kind of like the original series where they're like, okay, well, we're going to bring dinosaurs onto the mainland, right? Because the island thing didn't work out. It's got all these own problems, yeah. right? So we're going to bring them onto the mainland. And that doesn't go well. Of course. And the- So the director, J.A. Bayona is his name, he directed uh, Jurassic World- Fallen Kingdom, right? One of my favorite directors, he did The Orphanage. I have an Orphanage tattoo. Very big fan. He also directed the first two episodes of the new Amazon Lord of the Rings series. So Okay, so this guy's a big deal. He is a renowned guy. Like, he does good stuff. He does. But anyway, he got signed on for that one. So I had, I was like, okay, I'm going to go check it out. Like, hopefully it'll be better than the second, or better than, you know, Jurassic World. Right. Because I, you know, trust this guy. Well, they described it as a haunted house with dinosaurs. And then that automatically <laughs> checked out instantly. That's the last fucking place I want to be is a haunted house with dinosaurs. Makes no sense. <laughs> It yeah, makes and it no makes sense. no sense. What's, like what? Like what's the threat? Dinosaurs the ghosts or, or the ghosts? Dinosaurs? <laughs> what are we dealing with? What also, is going on? yeah. So absurd concept. Um, yeah. So there's like sequences in the sequel uh, where like dinosaurs are like chasing kids through this like old mansion. No. Again, terrible idea. But this is the point. This was like the Sims. drop off point where they were like moving dinosaurs in and out of to the point of like your like the black market thing. Like they were bringing yeah. dinosaurs onto the mainland and then they were kind of moving them around and they had like this giant mansion, which is where they were kind of housing them. And the dinosaurs break out and Sounds obviously traumatizing children. 
these children just so happen to be related um, to the guy that ran Jurassic Park. The older guy yeah. in, the, in the beginning. Yes. Um, the Wasn't older that ch- guy. children in the like? Who are these? These no, got to be like his so, great great grandchildren. Yeah, now? yeah. So it's oh. just they are related to him. They are in his bloodline. And then there's like this whole weird the thing about just like there's out the blood. there's like hidden stuff in their blood. There's like hidden like sequences and information and data within the bloodline. So like that's why they're important because they hold like keys to all this. Like I don't know. It's, it's you know it's they're getting stupid. another one. All right. And the people so, are going to turn in the dinosaur. Now, the dinosaurs in the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, for those that saw it, you'll all remember that the dinosaurs have broken out of this mansion and they are just running amok throughout the world. Is the how world, they, yeah. Is how they portray it. There's like a closing montage where you see dinosaurs in running through kinds Rome. of landscapes. Yeah, yeah running the through The big fish dinosaurs, whales and shit. And, and, and then even one of the trailers, the teaser trailer for Jurassic World... Uh, Dominion, they had a T-Rex terrorizing a child and a group of people at a drive-in movie theater, which is not a scene in Jurassic World Dominion in any way, shape, or form. This is just a... I, I don't know why it existed, but it does exist. Anyway. Um, what? It has no premise. Like, the premise of dinosaurs... This is the craziest part, and I'm not spoiling anything for anybody, because it's, think- it's a dog shit yeah. film. But the premise of dinosaurs, right? Because oh, I shit. went into Dominion, I went into Jurassic World Dominion thinking, okay, there's a bunch of dinosaurs running around the United States. We got a problem, right? Velociraptors are eating your dogs and your kids. That's, and that's what issue. I would have liked to see. Yeah. yeah. This is not the concept of the third film in any way, shape, or form. There's no carryover from that idea. None. Zero. <laughs> zero there is a short like 30 second clip where they're like oh we rounded the dinosaurs up and we're shipping them back to this island not the island where jurassic world was to another island a lot of islands out there with a lot of dinosaurs on them apparently so we're moving all these dinosaurs around but though i went into this thinking like oh we've got dinosaurs running through arkansas we got a problem right and we're gonna catch them there are dinosaurs running around mind you because don't forget chris pratt has his velociraptor and his velociraptor has a baby and they're living out in like Montana together and for whatever reason the Velociraptor trusts Chris Pratt and listens to him and so he just got like a German Shepherd Velociraptor essentially uh, yeah 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 yeah. and then remember when that one time when I was like oh he (laughs) makes a promise to that Velociraptor it seems like a really stupid idea it plays out the exact same way I described it so these like poachers kidnap the Velociraptor's baby why I'll let you watch the movie and find out for yourself. No, nah, not spoiled. Dumb fucking reason. Anyway, they capture the baby Velociraptor, and then Chris Pratt obviously makes a promise to the, to the Velociraptor. Raptor. I will bring the <laughs> I will bring her back. So then he goes on this like globe trotting <laughs> mission to recover this baby Velociraptor while the mom Velociraptor is just hanging out in Montana waiting for Chris Pratt to bring the baby back. Crazy, absolute crazy concept. That's literally his entire story arc in the entire film is that he is just trying to recover. This baby velociraptor. That's it. And meanwhile, he's getting chased by dinosaurs, also like in Rome and Venice or wherever. Like I told you, like they have these, like they have weaponized and militarized dinosaurs. So they have this thing where they take a laser pointer and they point it at you. And then the velociraptors all just hunt you down. And that's a theme throughout the movie, which is just absolutely so stupid. Because a laser pointer? Let's go, guys. Come on. That's what if I had my own laser thing. pointer? I just pointed back at you. <laughs> or just a cat. Yeah. All right. You know? You know what I'm saying? So I know what you're thinking. How can it get any dumber than that? It does yeah. get a lot dumber than that. So the crux of the whole film, the whole film is built around this concept of this company, Biosyn, which is the company that's basically behind the dinosaurs now. It's like the new engine, right? Biosyn. New Umbrella Co- yeah. Corporation. Yeah. So... <clears throat> They have engineered no way. prehistoric locusts. All right, prehistoric locusts like grasshoppers, I'm and they're tired. big. They're big. I'm tired. They're like they're like <laughs> Pomeranian Chihuahua size locusts. They're big, and they are using these locusts. All right, to wipe out crops that were not grown with biasin seed. Why? That's the concept of the movie. So all of these farmers, 
their crops are getting wiped out by these gigantic by prehistoric <laughs> flying, locusts. Flying bummering. And they're all like, <laughs> all of these farmers are like, what's happening? And then like these reporters come in and they're like, what's going on? And then one, one of the farmers is like, we don't have bias in seed, so they're wiping out our crops. And like that's the whole premise is this conspiracy theory that Biasin is using prehistoric locusts, engineered, mind you, to wipe out competitive farming. <clears throat> competitive competitive uh, farm seed, rather. That's the whole concept. That's how the whole movie kicks off. That's the whole idea. So the original cast of Jurassic Park comes back to basically prove that Biasin is a corrupt company is using prehistoric locusts to destroy farm product and crops that were not grown with bias in specific seed. All right, stick with me. How does that relate to Chris Pratt and the baby raptor and the kids in the house? In the house? Great question. You would love to know. And I feel like it's spoiling it if I tell you. Okay. Oh, you know what? But I'm going to watch this. Let me tell you this. Come back next week. Like, yo. The reason is so absurd. It's, it's insanely absurd. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. So okay. don't even All worry right. about it. You got to just watch right. it. I feel, like, watch I feel it. like we got to find this out. You got to yeah, just watch it. <laughs> it's too so absurd. You have to watch it. And then we can follow up. I don't want to spoil that for you because that's like the most absurd part of the whole like thing. Um, and I feel like I got to I, I gotta leave you with one little, you know, nugget of suspense. And it'll be that. It, don't worry. It's going to be tremendously disappointing. It's just. It's but just it's so absurd. Very odd to me when you get a renowned director. Right, and then they come in, and they see this script that's well, some shit, and they're like, "Well, my check is cleared." So I'm this is do this shit anyway. Colin uh, Colin Trevavaro or something like that um, is the director of the. He directed the first Jurassic World. He's directed some other big movies as well, but he skipped the se- the sequel, uh, Fallen Kingdom. He did not do, but he came back to do. So this they got one. the Star Wars. He is, thing going on. yeah. There's little evidence. The Ryan to Johnson, suggest that JJ he is Abrams, a great thing. Yeah. director. He's fine. This it's a terrible, 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 terrible story. It's a terrible movie. The script is god awful. It had it just had so much potential. Well, Jurassic Park in and of itself, the concept is a great concept, and the idea of dinosaurs and all that—it's all really uh, like magical. Like you want, it's very yeah. inspiring. Like it's it's cool. They gotta go show now. So they can really they ride. To. They can really ride. You know, I ride think, that to the, the bank if they want. Theatrical mm, release is kind yeah, of maybe. Yeah. Go maybe. show. Give us some small scale prey yeah. type. Could be. One dinosaur, one person, suspense. Let's see how that goes. Because they tried to go super scale dinosaurs, genetically engineered dinosaurs, black market, and it just bombed. Mm. So like, let's just Dude, it's so take bad. it back to the drawing board. It's so bad. Okay. We did our watch lists. Yeah. You're going to watch Jurassic World Dominion. We're going to follow up on this because yeah. of how bad it is. I have so much more to say about it, but I don't want to spoil it, and we'll trash it on a, on a later episode. Did you watch the first episode of She-Hulk? No, I've still right. not watched that yet. Cool. I yeah. We'll save it. Yeah, I've, I did a lot of movies this week. Sounds like it. Um. Oh my God, there's no time left in this episode, but I did watch Everything Everywhere All at Once. Absolutely incredible. We'll talk about that in the next episode, though. Copy. We'll get into that. So. All right, trash. Man. Sorry, that yeah, I'm not into the whiskey. I'm I'm out on it. I mean, I'm gonna keep drinking. Um, it, but I'm bah, not on it. Yeah, it's a bomb. Episode twenty eight.